Hey, uh, this is Dr. Jonathan Cachet, uh, director at the Hocken College Cannabis Analytical Lab. Uh, as you can see, we are very close to being done and ready for samples. Uh, I'm joking, of course. Uh, this is what the building did look like before we started construction on the commercial cannabis lab. And actually, this space is slated for the educational lab in which our students uh, in the cannabis lab tech program will eventually uh, learn and be taught. Hey everyone, Johnny here with OhioCannabis.com. I'm down here with Dr. Jonathan Cachet at Hocking College's Ohio Medical Marijuana Testing Facility. How are you doing today, Doctor? Oh, well, we are uh, coming off uh, two years of preparation and planning. Uh, I am doing well. Uh, we are a week away from our final inspection. Uh, I think everything is on track, uh, but to say I'm fine would not be right. <laughs> Now, and he's right about the two years. I mean, I've personally seen you go through the process. You guys were always in the forefront of being in the head of the laboratory uh, testing facilities. Right, right. Um, you've put in so much hard work. You've, you've trailblazed all over Ohio, and it came to fruition. You know, it's finally here. Right, right. Um, an extra caveat out of the lab, you guys also got the, um, the cannabis laboratory uh, program from the school. So Hawking College really was a trailblazer in that they were the first to answer the headlines of is this program even going to come into existence because no institutes of higher education have stepped up to be a testing lab. Uh, not across only, the nation, you know, not just in Ohio, but just across the nation. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, not only has Hawking and uh, its administration uh, stepped up to perform this state mandate, uh, you know, as you can see by the beautiful building around us, uh, they really have provided an entrepreneurial, entre, entrepreneurial spirit to this. Uh, they really leaned into it, um, and they were very supportive of the, you know, my suggestion that we should submit to the Department of Higher Education. Uh, a two-year associate's degree with a major in cannabis lab technician. Um, this is something that is was unheard of. It, no one had ever even tried it before. Um, so you know, we were able to pull together the curriculum, you, um, which you helped build. I built, yeah. Um, you know, and I was able to rely on my experience uh, in the cannabis industry in other states. You know, from cultivation and processing, and of course, as a scientist, you know, I nerded out in the California labs as well. Yeah. Um, but I was able to draw on all of that experience to make sure that the students that are in this program uh, really leave the program with a firm understanding of how to perform the analytical chemistry. Uh, we make no uh, qualms about uh, this is an analytical chemistry program. You know, it's not a hey, let's get stoned uh, cannabis program. Right. Uh, and in very much the same way, uh, the Hawking College Cannabis Analytical Lab, uh, distinct from the educational program, uh, will take not only my experience, but the experience of my staff throughout the cannabis industry uh, to provide a service to the cultivators and the processors where we're not just you know, taking a sample and testing and giving you the results, you know, we understand what it's like when PM starts showing up. Uh, we understand what it's like when you can't sleep when you see the, spi you know, the, the spider mites. Um, you know, getting that extraction coming out right, getting the formulations right so uh, the patients will have an enjoyable but also therapeutically beneficial vaporizer product. You know, none of this stuff is trivial. Um, and the services that the lab is going to provide will not only ensure the public safety, um, but it will also provide an edge to the cultivators and the processors who um, consult, you know, use us for their testing services uh, because we've been there. You know, we know what it's like. We're not just uh, lab rats. Uh, you know, we're cannabis people. Yeah, that's the thing. Most of your staff has experience in cannabis one way or another across the country. Right. So, um, you know, we talked before, a lot of people can do science. Some people can do science really well. But to do good science and understand cannabis, that's a real specialty that not many labs can bring, I think. Right, right, yeah. You know, and, and really growing up in Ohio, spending time in California, you know, uh, Ohio patients are in for a treat. Uh, the world of cannabis, some say, is much broader and vaster than that of wine. You know, the terpenes involved in the flavor profiles, the effects that you can get, different methods of administration. I mean, I'm a, I'm a psychopharmacologist, so I could talk about that yeah, all day. Loves it. Um, but it, it is certainly something that I think separates our lab from other labs in the state. Yeah, I agree. Now, it's a little loud in here. Uh, there's everyone setting up. Uh, the ex exhaust system's pretty intense, so, you know, it's, it's obviously going to be well ventilated in here. Um, right now, you guys are about 90, 95% ready. We know that uh, next week you guys are getting your final inspection. Right. Uh, hopefully, as long as all the colors 
uh, pass, uh, you guys will be ready to start testing samples. Right, yeah, and this will be the last element in the supply chain that is Ohio's medical cannabis program. Uh, fingers crossed, everybody, it could be possible before Christmas to get medical cannabis samples. Of course, it will just be flour, um, and as the state has said, uh, and that would just be you guys testing it. It'll still probably not be available until January by the time the testing comes back. They, I've heard there's they a dispensary uh, in Winterville, Ohio, that may be open and ready to go. Okay. Um, so they may have the Hocking College approved stamp on the bag of flour. Mm -hmm. uh, and who knows? You know, it could be uh, a mother and father who have a two year old son that has epilepsy that will now be present for Christmas. I mean, that it's fantastic. It is. Um, you know, really, the state has uh, worked very well with us, you know, has been very supportive. You know, once we got that provisional license, everybody really hit the ground running. Uh, we're working very closely with the state, as well as the cultivators and, and the processors that have been announced thus far, uh, to all come together uh, to really see this pipeline through. And you mentioned working with the state, you know, um, they're obviously learning as they go to and trying to do the best they can. You know, they, it has taken longer than anticipated but I still think the majority of people um, want, want the best for this program. And, oh, and yeah, yeah. You, you've seen that working with them directly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, now we're, you know, you know, we're sort of in direct conversations with them. Um, yes, they, they want to get this program up and running just as much as the activists do. Um, you know, there has not been any states that did not experience a delay. Um, and of course, it's frustrated different people at different times, and I was one of those people. Yeah. Uh, but we are there now, and uh, we'll be up and running soon. It's great to hear. All right, so uh, Johnny and I uh, have been signed into the lab, proper visitor management procedures, uh, and we are now going to take you guys into the Hocking Cannabis office suite. You know, the office suite is really where, uh, you know, support personnel um, have their offices. We have a conference room uh, where, of course, we'll be able to sit down with uh, cultivators or processors or who are interested in pushing their products a little bit further and talk about R&D and product formulations. Um, you know, really just the administrative uh, stuff. Where the real interesting stuff is, is on the analytical floor. So let's go down that way. Close, but not there yet. Uh, so the, all of the testing, uh, when it's performed, the lab actually goes out to the cultivators or the processors and picks up the samples. This is to ensure that the samples are actually representative of the larger uh, 15 to 25 pound batch of cannabis flower. Um, so once our field techs go and retrieve that sample, uh, they'll then bring it into the analytical floor. As you can see, restricted access uh, per Ohio regulations, only licensed and credentialed uh, employees by the Ohio MMCP are allowed onto the analytical floor. This is, uh, of course, particularly true uh, for the sample storage room. So all the samples obtained will be brought into the sample storage room. We will weigh them uh, with very accurately calibrated balances, uh, log them into our information management system, and then store them at negative 20 degrees Celsius. This ensures that the product doesn't change in any way while it's waiting to be tested. Uh, once it is queued up and tested and ready to go, our analytical staff will go into the sample storage room, retrieve the sample, and then begin its run through the analytical pipeline. This is Grant, he knows what he's doing, getting things together. Um, so we got a lot of boxes and stuff here. Uh, this is a sample preparation bench, you know, so essentially preparing all the samples for the tests that we have to do. Of course, we can't just, you know, take a cannabis flower and stick it into a machine and then have it tell us how much THC or CBD is in that sample. Uh, we have to do very precisely controlled uh, sample preparation techniques that essentially take away the matrix or all unnecessary uh, material that we're not interested in measuring and leave just the analyte so we can actually measure the amount in there to a very high degree of precision. Uh, with cannabis samples, of course, uh, we are interested in the amount of THC and CBD. Uh, those are the two cannabinoids that are required to be measured by Ohio Revised Code. 
The Hawking College Cannabis Analytical Lab will actually be measuring the, con uh, the con uh, concentration of 11 cannabinoids. Uh, the potency is measured on our Shimatsu HPLC machines. Uh, we have two of these set up in the lab. That is because almost e every sample that comes through the lab will have to uh, quantify the cannabinoid content. Uh, so in addition to every sample being tested for its cannabinoid content, uh, we also have to test every single sample, whether it's flour, oil, uh, an edible, a topical, uh, for potential pesticides or fungicides. Um, I know that the medical professionals and particularly the patients are concerned about the potential of pesticides in their medical products uh, because when you put heat to these products, you know, they could turn into potentially dangerous toxins. Uh, for medical patients, this is a, a problem. Uh, and frankly, it's what distinguishes a licensed medical system from the black market. Uh, you can rest assured that our chemists and Shimatsu staff are getting trained up uh, so that every product that is tested in this lab uh, will be pesticide free before it ends up on dispensary shelves. Um, that's done with the Shimatsu LCMSMS, that's an LCMS triple quad. Uh, it is one of the most complex uh, and most expensive uh, instruments in the lab, uh, but one that will certainly be used quite often. While the Ohio Revised Code does not require that uh, samples be tested for terpenes, um, I think the medical patients and the medical professionals are very well aware that the terpenes really uh, provide a lot to the therapeutic value and the experience of consuming cannabis. Uh, so we will actually be testing every sample for 19 terpenes. Um, terpenes are what provides the aroma. Um, citrine, for example, is a lemon smell. Uh, beta caryopylene is uh, found most common in cannabis products. It's actually what drug sniffing dogs are trained to detect. Um, but we will be testing for those 19 terpenes using a Shimatsu GC uh, headspace. Um, the samples are placed in what's called a headspace vial. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of liquid down here. Uh, then that gets entered into the machine. Uh, a needle will then go through this diaphragm and pull just the air out of the headspace vial. So we're actually testing for the volatile compounds that are the terpenes. Um, the GC headspace will also be used to examine every extract for residual solvents. So this may be uh, uh, hydrocarbons like butane or, pentane or propane um, or ethanol, uh, but we definitely want to make sure that the uh, purged oil is completely free of any potential flammable or explosive uh, gases may, uh, left over in the, the production process. Uh, and this GC headspace unit allows us to do that. The uh, wonderful guys from Shimatsu are in this ICPMS room. Uh, the ICPMS is uh, also a very complex analytical instrument, uh, is used to test for heavy metals. So cannabis is pretty unique in that it's an accumulator plant. It will absorb uh, any toxins in the ground and pull it within its plant tissues. So this includes heavy metals like arsenic or lead. Um, by taking samples and putting them into a microwave digester, we're able to pull away or burn all of the organic matter and then uh, detect any trace elements that are then left over. Uh, another good example of this, uh, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor in Russia that, re that had a meltdown not too long ago or in, the, in the past. The, the Chernobyl reactor in Russia is actually surrounded by fields of hemp uh, as an accumulator plant because it will pull radiation out of the ground. Um, so while there won't be any radiation in your plants uh, grown by our great cultivators here in Ohio, there could be heavy metals that are just uh, mixed in or uh, trace levels that are in the soils or mediums that they're using. Uh, and the ICPMS will make sure none of that ends up on the shelf. You guys are going to be testing 11 cannabinoids and 19 terpenes. We can list all those later, which ones you guys will go over. We can name a few, but um, the transparency within the program for the patients, they're going to be able to access these test results to see who's really putting out good clean medicine and, and what potency and what cannabinoids are in these various strains. Yeah, right? well, you know, but really even more than that, um, the people who stand to benefit the most from this medical cannabis program are, you know, elderly people who have maybe never used cannabis. And so they're going to go to a dispensary and they're going to learn about grape ape. Um, to them, grape ape doesn't really mean anything. Uh, and if the great vape runs out, which it often does, what should they go to next? Um, 
determining and navigating through that process is really about understanding the cannabinoid and terpene profile. So while it may be called, you know, Chevy gas, you know, diesel. Uh, Skywalker if, OG. Skywalker OG. Uh, if the analytical profiles are the same, then they can be sort of more confident in that they're going to get the same effects from a different strain. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, we really, as a testing lab, um, have much broader intent in taking the data that we're collecting and transforming it into actionable knowledge for the medical professionals, right? So in many ways, I see the testing lab as closing the loop in the whole medical cannabis program. Uh, we'll be able to look at these analytical profiles that are coming from different cultivators and processes in mass, in large, uh, and hopefully be able to identify you know, suggestions that maybe neurodegenerative uh, disorders are better suited with this analytical profile. Uh, epilepsy may be more responsive to these analytical profiles. You know, we're really at the forefront of figuring this stuff out. Um, even states that have had medical programs for years, these are the same conversations they're having there. Um, so, you know, really it, it's, it feels great to be able to be in Ohio and now to be able to meaningfully contribute to that process. Um, and also, you know, sort of push the needle. You know, we're just at the tip of the iceberg on cannabis as a medicine. Um, and who knows where we go from here? Yeah, no, you're right. And as a patient, to have that data to understand, hey, this one worked for me, but this one didn't, you know, that comes into your realm of expertise of pharmaco pharmacology and right. then how the, these, these drugs and uh, compounds interact with the human body. So right. the more we know what we like or how it makes us feel, the better we can, like you said, if they're one of the medicines happens to be out, these other flavor profiles or, or terpenes will be, you know, visible on, in some type of QR code or on the packaging somehow. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it's a lot of data. It's a lot of information. Yeah. So uh, what we intend to do to offer to our cultivator and, and processor clients uh, is to push to their website or our website the complete rundown of what the analytical results were. Um, there are restrictions uh, in the Ohio Revised Code on what can be on the label, um, but really it's more of a, a real estate issue. I mean, we're talking about 19 compounds. You know, I'm sure plenty of people know what it's like to look at an ingredient list and have no clue what yeah. those things are. Um, so I really view it as a responsibility of the lab to sort of digest that information in a, in a way that grandma uh, can figure out that you know, she's better with caryopoline than she is with citrine. Uh, and, and really, uh, for, for the patients in Ohio, uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, the, the world of cannabis is wider and deeper than it is in wine. Often I'll hear people in Ohio say, well, I don't like weed, you know, it makes me paranoid. My, oh, strain, yeah. my response is, you know, you're complaining about a hangover from the well vodka. You know, have you tried Grey Goose? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I guess it's words of encouragement, too, to, to people who maybe have a lot of hope in, in the medical cannabis program to, to help them with their condition. Um, you know, if they go get a, a, a headband and it makes them paranoid and gives them a headache, they shouldn't write off cannabis entirely. They should think about a different analytical profile and how that might uh, help them. Yeah, that's, that's, good, that's a good point. Uh, well, we appreciate you having us down here. Obviously, this is a first behind-the-scenes exclusive look to the lab and how you guys are setting things up. Sweet dreams are made.